Hello. Hello everyone who's tuning in. Let me get the camera rolling and we will start. Bam. Or not. Hello? Camera? There we go. There it is. Okay, so today the stream is not going to be that long. I'm just going to do a few a few little tricks here and there. Um, I think we'll start off with actually preparing the model for 3D printing. That should be fine. And then we will kind of work on this on this model, render it out. Ten bobs, a bunch of them. That's true. Okay, let me close that one off. And we don't really need to see the lights, so let me close those off. And also the music is a little bit... there we go. Okay. So, car. Um, off stream I did this kind of a holder thingy for the car. You hold itself right up as a model. Of course, we will not be rendering it out, but it's just a nice thing to have. And let's just get into it. So that's a closed sub D and that's a closed sub D. So let's see how we can actually 3D print this out. So I will just make a copy of it right here. And what I like to do is I like to scale it down to size before I get it into a slicer. Yeah. So I'll just select my copy, create a bounding box around it, and I will be printing it out with a pretty small uh, 3D printer, a resin-based 3D printer. So let me scale, and I don't know, what's the size that we want? 120? I think like 120 millimeters, something like that. That should do the trick. Let's actually check uh, the distance here. Almost a millimeter. That's fine. That, that should hold up nicely. So that's going to be our little model. So now we need to export it. And I have two parts here. So I'll export the big boy now. Export. Um, and I'll export it to the car project as an STL and call it um, car main something like that it's save it's going to mesh it for me and i'll just hit the preview button to see how dense the mesh is going to be that's a pretty dense mesh i think how many uh half a million polygons i think that's that's gonna uh that's gonna work two millimeters well i do have a fillet there uh, so it's actually 1.2, something like that, and also everything is kind of filleted. If it's not going to hold up, I'll just reprint it with a thicker base. That's not a problem. A bigger issue is, is you know, if something doesn't print on the car, because this is just going to be like a... I don't know, an hour print, maybe? Uh, while the car is going to be like uh, eight, nine hours, something like that. Um, let me just hit OK. Oh, that's 51 megabytes. That's a big boy. Um, yeah, sure. Let's export it. I think all of the fillets, yeah. I, I, I do think all of the fillets will, will help it uh, with the rigidity. Um, and I'll export the small bit. Car. Uh, car base. Let's call it like that. Car base. Hit save. Hit OK. Uh, don't even care. Yeah, that's good. And now I don't need it anymore, so I'll just delete it because I have the big boy. Right there. Yeah, I always go for binary. Uh, binary is the best. Uh, it, re it removes all of the necessary uh, information from the mesh uh, so that it, it just basically loads up faster. Uh, for slicing, yeah, binary. For every, anything else, 
um, then no, not, not binary. For anything else, actually use OBJ format rather than STL. Um, let me open up this Photon Workshop. So this is a proprietary software, and it's already here, huh? Go away. Proprietary software um, that's used for for slicing up stuff for Photon uh, 3D printers. I don't remember which kind of 3D printer I, I have. It's the cheapest Photon one, right? N nothing, nothing fancy. Um, yeah, and this is something that we are going to be stuck with. It's not the best, but it does the job, right? Uh, at least it does the job. So let's go to car project and just drag and drop in our... Where do we start? Let's go for the small one first. Car base. Drag, drag and drop it in. Now it's here. Our little do that. That's going to be holding up our car. And... Right. So the first thing that I want to do with it is hollow it out. Because I don't want to waste a bunch of material, right? So I don't need this to be a completely solid object. Uh, so the tool that does that is right here, hollow and fill. Uh, click on click on that. And here I can just choose hollow thickness, you know, what kind of thickness I want. And if I want any infill, I can also choose that, but I don't need infill here. So just hollow thickness 1.5 millimeters seems to be okay. It's just it okay. And now it's hollowed, right? You can't really see it, but if I move the slicer down, you can see that it kind of creates this voxelized inner frame, inner structure, where it's hollowed out. Works like a charm. Right, so we have that. Another thing is we don't want any resin to be trapped inside of our little model here. So I need a drainage hole, and thankfully I have made one surface here that's flat well two but we'll use this one for drainage so i will go in here punching tool click on that and i'll just make a punch just let's let's make sure uh outer diameter two millimeters yeah that's uh, well that's diameter inner extend length three millimeters that's perfect that's fine so i'll just make a punchy hole right here and hit or hit OK. There we go. So we have drain a drainage hole right here for for the resin to flow uh, flow out of our model. Now, one thing that's different from uh, resin and FDM printers is that resin printers um, you don't really want to print directly on the bed. So if you have a large surface, well, it's not a large surface, but if you do have a surface of your model that's directly on the print bed. Uh, it sticks a little bit too well, and you will have fun, fun times trying to remove it later. So I'm going to actually rotate this bit. I'll rotate it like something like that. Yeah, I think something like that will work. And actually, I'll move it away from the print bit. You'll see why in just a second. I'll move it away by five millimeters. Like that, so there's a gap here. Um, now it's floating in space, that's exactly what I want. Uh, we will go into... And here we have like a bunch of different settings that I already dialed in, and if you, for some reason, need these settings, just print screen or, or watch the WAD later. Um, we will go into the... Uh, the support menu here and generate supports so there's this automatic filling of supports where it kind of finds places where it needs to add supports and usually it doesn't add too many <laughs> okay <laughs> that's that is what we call not enough supports right i want more so thankfully there's like manual support option here and i can press on the add button right here and just add one support here, one here, one on this corner, like that. And then as it's being printed, maybe it, it can be held by two more supports here. Maybe one last one 
right here. Just to make sure that kinda it's it's not gonna come loose. Yeah, that's about it. That's that's our small small print. I think that's that's gonna hold up nicely. Let's go jump back to our main editing mode. Click on this slice button here. Um, and I'll just yeah, car base PW0. Hit save. It's gonna it's gonna save it. I can I I uh, I can even preview it. And I can see every layer here, how, uh, how it's going to be printed out. Yeah, it seems like, seems like it's going to do the job fine. Oh, and I didn't see how long it's going to take. Oh, no. But I assume it's, it's going to be like an hour or so. So that's fine. Um, right, so this is done. Close that and let me get rid of this. Now let's do the big boy. Car project. Uh, car. Put that in here. Uh, okay. Let's try again. Why? Why don't you work? Or wait. Oh, car, yeah, that, that's the wrong one. That's the, the one, car main. Bam. I have no idea how we're gonna fit this. We might need to rescale. <laughs> uh, let's try, let's try fitting it. Uh, so the first thing is of course, rotating it 90 degrees. Yeah. And then rotating it like so. Will it fit? It, it seems like it's gonna fit, right? Maybe we don't even need this this amount of rotation. Maybe something like that will, will work. Um, it is getting clipped off here though. So we need to we'll need to move it to the side a bit. Let's do that. Um, just move a little bit to the side. So now that is not being clipped. And that is not being clipped. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And as per usual, I'll move it up by five millimeters so that it's nothing is touching the build plate. We have that done. Let's hollow it out. Wonder if that's gonna work. 1.5 millimeters. Let's do two for the car just to give it a little bit more rigidity. It's half a million polygons, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, yep, that's that. this is for 3D printing in resin. And now it is hollowed out, so let's see. And there are no hollow areas here. And then they begin here. That's cool. That's cool. Like that. And then everything else here is completely hollow. Um, my resin 3D printer of choice. Um, I only used like two or three, uh, two or three different ones. Um, the one that I'm currently using, I think it's in the video description or in the stream description. It's, oh my God, Photon Zero, I think. Wait, let, let, let me check. Yeah, so it is uh, Anycubics Photon Zero. Um, up, 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 up. This one right here. But I think, like, if I had to choose, I would choose uh, Photon Mono. Um, yeah, Photon Mono would be my, my go-to because it's so much, much faster. It's, it's crazy how fast these guys are. Um, so yeah, I would be choosing that instead of Photon Zero. Also, I believe Photon Mono comes in at a larger build volume because the build volume in this little 
thingy here is a little bit restrictive, but that's fine. Okay, so we have our whole model here, and I kind of want a drainage hole, but I don't really know where to put it. So, don't tell anyone. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking of just leaving it be. Uh, there's gonna be a little bit of resin stuck inside of it, but I think we'll, we'll be fine without any drainage. Let's go for supports. And, oh yeah, by the way, it kind of colors the wh wh where the support should be, right? That's nice. Uh, so I'll fill the supports automatically, and it's gonna take a little bit of time. Yeah, I do hand paint them. Uh, wait. Do I have any? Yeah, I do. Okay, uh, just a second. Bam. And hide me there. Um, that, yep, zoom in. That's hand painted. And this is not a resin print, this is an FDM print. And I just had fun with it, uh, right? Hand, hand painting it. So that's a blender sculpt. Um, I also have these, uh, these mushrooms. Yeah, I'm in. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. I have these mushrooms here that are also uh, 3D printed. Um, from th these ones are printed from resin. So that's that. That was a fun, fun little project. And I do have some um, some unprinted ones, uh, such as this. Oh, sorry, unpainted ones, such as this. But this guy is just waiting for its chance to. To get printed. Uh, so I do have uh, quite a few uh, hand painted ones all over the place. I don't know where else. Uh, yeah, it's too far. I can't reach it. But uh, yeah. Bam, bam. Back to here. It's it's a fun hobby. It's it's definitely a fun fun little thing to do. Okay, so this is what we get. That's a little bit... That's a little bit harsh in terms of these supports here. But I think, yeah, I think those are, those, those are needed, right? Let's, uh, let's help it out a bit and add more supports for the wheels, for instance. As well for this this area right here, like that, that should help out quite a bit. Um, and I will kind of go through here, click, click, and and make I'll I'll just make sure that the model doesn't get unstuck uh, during the print. So it's better to waste a little bit of material rather than to uh, need to reprint the whole thing. I'm not sure about this edge here. I think that's going to hold up. I think that's going to be fine. There's a lot of supports going on here. Um, perhaps I'll need to look into it. But basically those two will need to go in there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to connect all of this base into one slab. Um, so that means that I still need like a point here and a point here. That's good. And last one is just going to be here. Perfect. Okay. Let's take a look. There are some, some parts that are unnecessary. That's fine. It, well, it's our th first 3D print, so uh, we, we will make adjustments if we need to. Uh, for these, I will um, delete these supports. Because I think I have more chance of destroying the model when I'll try to remove the supports rather than uh, the supports helping. Uh, so th those will go away. There we go. 
It's perfect. Um, and I wonder why it's not giving it giving it a support here and giving one here. I will add add a support to this area right here. Ah, that that looks about right. That looks about right. Okay. So that's our our car model. Pretty scary printing it with these long supports, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. It should work. Um, so now it's time to slice it up. Our main. Hit save. And may the slicing begin. How's everyone doing? How's COVID? <laughs> it's going. COVID still going? Still going strong? How are different countries handling COVID? Sweden is wide open. Like there's uh, all of the shops are working, no restrictions. What? Well, some restrictions, but nothing, nothing too intense. Except for the university, of course. Can't have any lectures in the university. Let's see the preview. Oh, I didn't check how long it's going to take. Well, whatever. That is how it's going to print. I have high hopes. I have high hopes for this. I think this is going to print out just, just, just nicely. Um, so that's done. <clears throat> That is done, and let me, wait, let me do this, add it to the USB, yeah, okay, so, still in lockdown in UK, yep, no job or further education options. Just trying to teach myself sorceries as much as possible. Um, yeah, that's actually a very good way of spending spending lockdown. Uh, just brushing brushing on uh, brushing off your skills. No, that's that's not how you say it. <laughs> Increasing your skill level. Let's go with that. Um, that's the most like productive thing you can do. Um, or or entering competitions that's also that's also pretty good okay let me create a new layer call it base and just hide this this guy here in that layer and let's not talk about him ever again car 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 okay um i will send the prints to print just a second I, I need to actually manually click the print button. Um, 10 seconds and I'll be back. All right, the print is doing its thing. Everything's fine. Uh, always wanted to learn Cinema 4D and Blender, huh? And they are too similar and can't decide which one to dive deeper on. Uh, Blender. Uh, Cinema 4D is, well, it depends. Really depends, actually. Like Cinema 4D is the industry standard, but Blender is slowly taking over. It's kind of the same situation with Intel and AMD this, these days. Um, Blender is free. There's a much, much larger active community in Blender. Um, so I suggest out of those two, if you're fresh to, to both of them, getting into Blender, because I think it, it, 
it evolves faster than Cinema 4D. Even though Cinema 4D does have, uh, right now, it does have a stronger set of tools, but honestly, with both of them, you can do amazing work. Um, so let's not look at the bottom of the car, shall we? Let's instead figure out where the hell did I t put my show. Ah, there's no base, okay, that's fine. Uh, so let's instead start, start rendering it out from the top, not from the bottom. Um, so this very vision thing is pretty neat. But the problem with this, with it is that it doesn't show materials properly. Right now my car looks looks super weird. Is it possible to render grasshopper animations in Blender? Uh, we did it once, but I wouldn't suggest suggest doing it like uh, using uh, basically what you need to do is you need to write a script that the way we did it is we wrote a script where it exports every frame from rhino as a separate obj format automatically imports that frame into blender renders it out deletes the geometry exports the next frame out of Rhino as OBJ, imports it out into Blender, renders out the geometry, deletes it, and basically does it over, over and over again, uh, which... Let, let's... Let's just call it, it, it's not ideal, it's not an ideal workflow. Um, I wouldn't suggest, uh, suggest doing that. If you want to render out animations in blender just do do it in blender unless you're you're doing like kangaroo relaxation and you want to like render out kangaroo simulations or something like that then you're kind of stuck with rhino but for regular like architectural fly through animations um blender is actually better <laughs> honestly at least for me um okay so v-ray vision is weird and I didn't actually talk about why it's weird. We have a pretty intense uh, material going on now, the, the car master one, um, which has a bunch of layers and it's only showing it as a it's kind of glossy thing. And why is it showing it like a glossy thing here as well? Time for some... Huh. Oh, actually, that, that might be fine. Okay, let's slap it on top of the car and just render it out with interactive render. Will I release the model so you can create an interior? No, I will not. Um, this model is going to be 3D printed out. Well, later, m much later, I will, but probably in a year or so. Because right now this model is going to be 3D printed out and uh, given away, I think every month or so, uh, to my Patreon supporters. You know, we, we will we will um, kind of have a raffle and uh, some of the Patreon supporters will get the physical printed out model. So it's going to be like a, just a thank you, you know, from, from me, from, from the channel for, for supporting it. Not just Patreon supporters as well, the members on, on, on YouTube. Um, but later down the line, I might release the, the digital model. Is it possible to use pirate version programs? Of course it is. Of course it is possible. It's uh, the matter of... Uh, how, how do I phrase it? conscience right um you can but would would i suggest you using them eh, no not really it's if you need free programs just use blender right it's free uh, why not you don't need to to crack every single 
program just because your your friend is using it. Um, let's investigate this this area right here. <laughs> yeah, and for kangaroo stuff, yeah, that's actually looking okay. Uh, for kangaroo stuff, I do suggest. Um, I do suggest sticking to to Rhino and rendering it out in Rhino. Actually, you could use like default Rhino renderer and kind of get a okay result out of it. I did a video on it. Um, like something, let's say it like that. Something like this, like this quality of material and lighting, you can do in default Rhino renderer. You don't need Viri for that. Uh, it starts lacking when you need to do um, like hyper realistic interior visualizations or something or stuff like that. Then it starts lacking quite a bit. Also, it's not that fast, but not a problem. I'm actually turning on the environment HDRI to just see better what the hell am I doing. So there's some metal here that's that's being flaked off and I don't really like the tiling of it that much. So we'll we'll mess mess around with the tiling a bit. Um where is it? That's car paint, right? Car paint tiling. And we change the No, we go even deeper into it. Uh, we go into radius, I think, and we change it to like 20. Yeah, that's much more. That's better. I am not an architecture student. No, I'm a, I'm a teacher um, in an architecture school. Do I young, look young? Oh, I hope I, I look young. <laughs> yes, I am one of you kids. Yes. <laughs> Either way. It seems fine. Like the, the, the flaking of the the chipping of the paint, I mean, uh, looks okay. It's not, not perfect, but it is... Uh, it's fine. Like these areas here are, are okay. So I'm gonna stick to it. Uh, what I don't really like is the dirt. So let's ramp up the color of the dirt and let's just see it in action. And let's just see it in action. Come on. And let's just see it in action. There's no action. There's no dirt. Why is there no dirt? That's because I turned off the dirt layer. Let's turn it on and there's still no dirt. Let's uh, restart the render. There we go, there's our dirt. Okay, so the dirt is where it needs to be. That's the cool part. The bad part is... that I kind of want more. So let's call this dirt... like heavy grime instead. So this dirt is going to be a pretty... like pretty heavy one. Uh, almost pure black and we'll just kind of leave it at that why are rhino boolean commands when you're using solids with surfaced edges failing a lot um, surfaced edges do you mean chamfered edges? And why are they failing a lot? Well, um, one thing that really uh, that Rhino really doesn't like is if you have um, like one solid. Th this is gonna work, but let's say you have one solid and you have another one, and let's just scale it down to size, something like that. Bam! So you have two solids. And most of the faces of those two solids are touching. Um, then boolean difference, for instance, might not work. 
Wait. Okay, it does work here, but um, that's usually, from my experience, that's where it starts making mistakes. And the reason why it's making mistakes is because of, of uh, units and the fact that it's uh, working within some sort of a tolerance. So my suggestion would be if, if your booleans don't work, uh, I don't remember, is it increase or decrease the absolute tolerance of your, of your model? And that usually solves it. To, to a certain extent. Um, other thing would be that geometry is just screwed up. Make sure that it's a solid, uh, that both objects are comp like solid and don't have any non-manifold edges. It's probably increase. Um, okay. Have I ever used Quixel Mixer? Um, in an alternative workflow, uh, with Vray to apply multiple multi-layer texture on these models. Uh, no, no, I haven't. Actually, that's a pretty interesting idea. That's a cool idea to try. I I might try it um, in, in in some future videos. Yeah, uh, but I haven't uh, tried it, so I have no no comment no comment on that. So our dust layer is completely red, and as you can see now, it, since it doesn't have a blend material, it's just doing its thing, right, all over the place. So I need to add a blend material for the dust, and I need the dust to build up only on the top of the car. So the thing that we're going to do, how are we going to do this? Well, we will need a mix map, right? mix map um, texture and our top texture is going to be well for now let's just use white color and bottom texture is going to be black color and our mix map is going to be a fall off right something like this uh, so now if I look at it it looks like that and let's slap it on top of our car apply Hit, the, hit that sweet, sweet render button and see. Oh, non-planar surfaces. Um, booleans don't work on... Wait. Why Rhino Boolean commands when using solids with surfaced edges failing a lot? Um, booleans work only on surfaces that... Uh, on, on geometries that are closed properly. So... If you want a boolean for uh, to do a boolean with a non-planar surface to trim trim something away, it's much better to use trim. Yeah, the the trim tool to trim it away, then trim away the the surface and join them up together. Um, it's kind of a workaround, but that seems to work better. So that dust is not working. Why is it not working? It's kind of, oh yeah, I know, that's because uh, right now it's doing a Fresnel fall off according to our viewing angle, right? So that's not, not correct. Let's go into this blending map and change the direction for the blending to be instead of view Z to world Z. Like that. And it's inverted. So let me change it up like that. Uh huh, and it's not per perpendicular parallel, but rather I need it to be towards away. So the top is completely white, meaning that it's gonna be dusty at the top, and the bottom should be yes. The bottom is not dusty. Now, the problem is <laughs> that it's way too dusty, so we need to control this gradient somehow. And the way we control it is we um, wrap this um, this fall off texture, wrap it wrap it in just color correction, right? Or maybe let's use a spline curve instead. Let's use a spline curve. So we wrap it, or Bezier. Well, let's use spline. We wrap it with a spline curve, which just breaks the texture. So we need to re-render it. 
as per usual. Now it works again. But now, take a look at this. Um, maybe the pipes will 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 be the best uh, best area to to look into. Now, when I go into value and I ramp up, or rather ramp down the white value like so, and ramp it down even more, I have control over, you know, which which part. What's the angle at which it's going to get dust? So I think something like this is reasonable. Maybe even more so. Maybe like that. Yeah. Let me just make it smooth or, or make it uh, spliny. Can I make you spliny? Can't make you spliny, can I? No, everything is linear. Uh, why can't I make you sp like a spline? Shush. You. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. That's strange. Anyway, at least it, it, it seems to work. It, it seems to work fine. And there is a gradient there. So now let me turn off this uh, region tool. And now we can see that the whole car has dust buildup only on the top faces. Exactly like we want it to. Okay. That's done. Uh, but there is one more thing that we need to do. And it's this mix map. Uh, basically, the top face, or, or the, the place where, where the car gets the dust. Where's my music? There we go. Uh, place where the car receives dust. Um, it can't just be, you know, a cover of, of, of this single color here. It needs to be a little bit more nice, right? A little bit more pronounced. So I'm gonna... I'm gonna 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 say that the top color is actually gonna be a bitmap. And that bitmap, I already downloaded it last stream. It's just dust speckles bitmap. I'll hit open. And it looks like this, right? Perfect. But the tiling is all weird, and I can't really control the tiling. So what I'm gonna do is I'll wrap that bitmap in triplanar mapping. Where now I can change the size of the tiling. I'll give it like 500 millimeters. So every 50 centimeters that texture is gonna be um, repeated. I need to re-render as per usual. Rhino, uh, sorry, V-Ray 5 seems to be a little bit wonky. Um, and now only a little bit of it is shown, which I don't really like. I kind of want more dust, do I? Can we get more dust? Hmm. What if we also wrap it in a spline curve and just give it a little bit more brightness. Will that work? So that's more, that's less brightness, right? Yeah, that's less brightness and that is more brightness. So more brightness seems to, seems to work quite well. Just a tiny bit, even less, very small adjustments. But yeah, it seems to do the trick. Okay, so we have that going. But now you can see this repeti repetitive pattern appearing on the car and we need to get rid of it. So there 
There's actually in V-Ray 5, there's a cool tool that does that. If, you, if we go into our texture of dust speckles, I can go into texture placement and here instead of 2D, I can see mapping source and I can use a UV placement map on the placement source where under randomization, I can find stochastic tiling, which will kind of mess up my, my whole project. <laughs> God damn it. Why? Maybe it's just a bug. Let, let's try re-rendering. Let's try re-rendering. Yeah, it actually actually works better now. So th this uh, this now breaks breaks apart um, the, the, the the tiling of, of, of the texture. Which I really like. I think it's cool. I think it's a cool little thing. Okay, so now enough of dust being red. Let's make it gray. Or maybe maybe it can be red, but uh, a little bit towards orange. Something like that. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be okay. So we have a little bit of dust, we have a little bit of paint chipping going on. A bunch of different stuff. Okay. Where do we go from here? Do we work on existing materials or do we keep creating layers? Maybe we work on existing ones and then we kind of continue adding layers. So I'll start with... Uh, let's start with car... car base, because that's just metal, right? So I want it scratched. Right? I wanted this, this material to be scratched, so I'll just apply it and start, uh, start rendering it and see how we can get it scratched. I don't really want to use a texture for it. I think that there's no need for that. And also this looks like freaking nickel. Uh, can we make this a little bit... A little bit less intense? 0.9. Yeah, something like that. That's a bit better. Um, so I'm gonna give it a bump map, actually. I'm gonna give it a bump map. And that bump map is gonna be... Hmm. We could do marble. I think marble would work. Or speckle. How does speckle look like? Well, speckle might also work. Let's try it with speckle. So I'll zoom in and I'll check. And I can't see it anywhere. Okay. Is it the size? Yeah, it, it, it was the size. Okay, so 0 0.005 gives us that. I think we can go for uh, 0 0.01. And we will get something like this. Which already looks kind of okay. It's a little bit stretched out though. So my thoughts are, what if we wrap it in triplanar mapping? And we just say that, yo, every meter, every thousand millimeters, just repeat the same uh, same tiling. All right. So we have something like that now, and we can't really see it. I need to render just a small small portion instead. Okay, so those speckles are right now way too small. Uh, so let's do 0 0.05, like five times larger. 
even more. Uh, 0. Point... Or actually 0 0.05 is fine. The only thing is that we need to adjust the brightness contrast not to have that many. Um, so I'm going to wrap this uh, speckle texture in uh, spline curve again. Value. I'll just mess around with the value. Oh yeah, I need to restart the, the render. Okay, so that's less for some reason. Is that gonna be more? Yeah, so that's more. And that's even less. I wonder why that happens. It should be other way around, right? Hmm. Very interesting. But yeah, something like this should be okay. It's just that they are still too big. Uh, so 0 0.1 now. Yeah, that looks about right. All kind of bumpy and whatnot. Um, and is there a way for me to stretch it out? No, there's not. That's fine. That's okay. We will stick to what we have. Or maybe there is. Wait. Um, can I go for here, texture placement and repetitions, change this to two? Yes, now they get stretched out, that's good. Okay, so that's our like indents. Um, I think we could do more, right? Or, or, yeah, more. So more is gonna be like that, right? Oh my God, I, I, do, I don't. Don't understand how this is working. Or does it need to be other way around? Like that, and then here. Okay, that's 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 the way to do it. Got it. So black is there, white is there. So I'm just basically inverting it. Something like that. Great. And now it needs to be mostly black. So it's, it's gonna be other way around. Right here. Like so. Hmm. Am I being a dumbass? Why is, why is that per okay, guys? I'm 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 losing my mind. Why is that considered to be pure? Oh, okay, that's pure white. So that means that this is gonna be pure black. Yes. Okay. So that means that if I have it like so. Only small portions of it will be white. Or not. Or maybe yes. Yes, maybe? Only small portions? Okay, almost there. Okay, that was, th th this is good, th this is fine. Uh, that was much harder 
uh, than 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 I thought it's gonna be. Anyway, we are uh, we we do have a little bit of a bump here now for our our material uh, for our metal material. Now, and uh, we're gonna keep it the, the the way it is. Now we will deal with car paint. So the thing is that car paint is chipped in our case, right? And the logic is, uh, let me actually show it to you. Apply. Um, apply, and then let's take a look at some edge. Oh my God, uh, some edge, edge, edge. So, you can see here, around this, this edge, for instance, it is chipped, right? So we need to, we need to be able to <clears throat> show flaking of the car paint before it gets chipped. You follow me? You understand what I mean? Yeah, you understand what I mean. So, there's going to be a little bit of work here. My thoughts are that we can use... Um, we can use... This blend material. Copy. And we can work with this blend material as a bump map. So if we do a bump map and we say that our bump map is a mix map and we use that same chipping, uh, same chipping map as our blend And let's stop and play again. Wait, I, I need to apply this material, of course. Let's just see if it's gonna do anything. I'm using this edge as, as a reference right here. So it does give a little bit of a bump, but it's nothing, nothing even close to what I want. So we need to work on this more. Uh, can I upload this video to my channel? I upload all of my uh, live streams to the channel, of course. So we need to investigate what we have here. So we have the dirt map here, of course. With inner occlusion and the texture is a turbulence map. Okay, so we don't really need the turbulence map. Clear that and clear that. But we don't need those two. Right, but what we do need is for the top uh, to have some sort of a some sort of a texture for for our mix map top, some sort of a texture. So right now I'm just gonna give it checker texture, um, and I'll just wrap that checker texture, wrap in, um, try planner mapping every five centimeters. Let's try. Okay, so it, 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 it does the trick, but the thing is that it does it inverted. <laughs> we don't want it to be inverted, so I am going to come back here and I'm gonna say that no, no, no. You, you need to be in the bottom and the top is actually black. Like that. And we try again. 
Okay, okay, good, 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 good. So now we have we have the possibility to add the bump map to every corner of our paint, which is good, which is good, but we do need a texture for the you know the paint before it chips off it creates these kind of a bubbles. So we need those bubbles. And those bubbles, I think we can kind of get away with um, with clearing that and instead using cellular. This cellular mapping. This. Uh, need to re-render. And just adjusting the, the, the size and whatnot. So let's see, we have chips, which look like that, that's not what we want. Cells, which might be okay, but we need the edge color to be darker. Or no, the center color to be dark. Ah, but cells are also straight lines. Okay, so dots were the best in that regard. Then the size of them, well, we can change the size here first. So let's say every, every 30 centimeters, they get repeated. So we have something like this. Uh-huh, uh-huh, we're, we're getting there. And then this needs to happen. Like that. So they get bubbly, right? They get bubbly. Um, so we have that going on. And we can change the density as well, right? Or decrease the density. Okay, so that's more or less bubbles. So let's try... Let's actually try something like this. The overall form. And we do get those bubbles in there. That's good. That is what I want. Um, the gradient for this needs to be not so sharp. So I'll go back to mix map and I'll reduce the lift and gain, I think. Is that the thing that I need to reduce? I don't know. Ah, crap. Let's try 0, 1. Nothing really changed, huh? Cool, cool. Coolio. Uh, so instead, then, let's jump into the actual color and increase the radius here to Let's go for 30, so 10 extra centimeters. And distribution 50. Okay. Let me apply the master material. And let's just take a look at that, that area right there to, to see if we need any more adjustments for it. Oh, come on, start rendering, please. Or do I actually need to zoom into it? Oh, no, never mind, it's rendering. So we do have bubbling now of the paint, and we have it, you know, being chipped off where it's not bubbling or uh, when it's even closer to the edge. Good. Good, 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 good. Good, we are, we are getting there. Our car is getting older by the minute.
There's a lot of dirt build up there. I kind of like it. Okay. What now? Dirt splatter, probably. Right? Because we have the black grime. Uh, so we need like... The dirt is whatever. Dirt, dirt can be whatever. You know, it's just black color. That's fine. It can have a little bit of a of a sheen to it so it can have a little bit of reflection 0.7 just so that it looks a little bit more oily then base where's my music i want to Let's go for funk. Hmm. Sorry, I'm now just just thinking thinking it true. So dust is whatever, dirt is fine, base is okay, paint is fine. So we need, yeah, we need more textures. So uh, what's what's a good website for textures? I keep forgetting all the good ones. I just use Google for it, honestly. Hmm. think what kind of I'll just google it I'll just google it scratched the phone is doing its thing I've just finished her work. <laughs> so that looks good, right? What do you think? Does that look convincing? I think that looks looks fine once we hit it with a proper proper render. That's that's gonna look okay. Um scratched. Um Scratched steel texture, something like this, right? We we want something like this in our in our car, I think. I think we do. So let's 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 get one. Let's get one in here. Um. Honestly, there are no good ones. Or do we just do grunge? Well, this one is kind of okay. I can just do this one, right? Yeah, let's do this one. Uh, so I'll just save it. 
Oh, it's it's low res. It's super low res. Oh no. Oh no. Um, okay, fine. Grunge texture. Gr Grunge texture. Uh, we do. Oh wait, sorry. Do we have any grunge te textures here? Um, stuff. Textures. Alpha. Okay, there's no textures here that I could use. Rusty metal. Rusty metal to the rescue. How do you look like rusty metal? Not that great. Can we use specular then? We could kind of use specular. Kinda. I'm not sure. I kind of want it to be brushed a little bit more than that. This is just rested. Okay, fine. We will download it. Um, where was it? That, that. That's kind of fine, but that goes from light to dark. This is the best. Okay, fine. I, I, I will get it. Press download to get the full size one. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't need and you can do it without attribution. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Let me just get this one instead. You know, this is even better. Okay, save. Uh, My browser dying. Or am I rendering still? Yes, I'm still rendering. Of course, my browser is dying. Um, yeah, metal. That's that's perfect. So that's how it looks like right now. I think that looks fine. It's still a little bit too clean in, in terms of, <laughs> I know, uh, but in, in, in terms of the overall like side panels and whatnot. So I'll add that, that brushed look to it and I'll actually be adding it. Where will I add it? Ooh, that's, that's a tough decision to make. That is a tough decision to make. I do need to add it somehow. Okay, let's let's create a new material for now. Generic. Perfect. Apply. Start rendering. Um, so that's just gray. That's good. And now I have my uh, car project right here and my metal right here. So I'll just drag it in as my texture and it doesn't show up properly, of course. So I need to wrap it in uh, tri planner mapping and give it a size of, I don't know, I always use 50 centimeters and then adjust it accordingly. So that's how it looks like. That's fine that it looks like that right now. I just need to get in here and see. That's the size. It can be bigger. It can be every meter. That's fine to have streaks like that. Um, okay. We have that and it's still tiling quite ugly. So I'm going to go in here and I'll do the same procedure as I did before with UVW placement, randomization and choosing stochastic tiling. I'll just ramp up the tiling a bit. 
So it's going to have this kind of a discontinuity here, but that's fine. Or is it? Well, maybe it's fine. I think it's fine. All right. Now, we need to actually re-render and I will wrap this texture in uh, maybe, yeah, let's just do a spline curve. I, I really like doing spline curves just for uh, the purpose of, of, of it being pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's how it does it, huh? So that's a really dark area there, which I don't actually like. Uh, let's see if there's a way of how we can how we can fix that area. Wait. If this goes there and this goes there, that's going to be mostly, and that, that makes it black, which means that if we move it even further, oh crap, inverted itself. If we move it even further, like this, only a few streaks will show up. That's exactly what we want. Yeah, something like this, something like this. I think something like this will work. Maybe even less. Perfect. Okay, so we have this uh, this color here now, and I think what we can do with it is we can copy that texture, go to car paint, and not paste it yet, but rather use use. Uh, mix map say that our how will that work <laughs> yeah that's gonna work uh, paste as copy so that's our mix map and for now let's just check it out how, how the, the car paint will look like mm-hmm so we get those scratches in there. Perfect. Ah, yeah. And now let's look at the master material. All together. I need to save. <laughs> Three megabyte file, by the way. Five megabyte file, sorry, not three. I'm just waiting for it to render it out a little bit better so that we can see. Or actually, let me let me zoom in to some somewhere closer, somewhere here. So that we can see what what what's what's gonna what's gonna happen. Let's just wait a bit. Okay. All scratched up all scratched up I think that looks fine right yeah I, 
think that looks fine. Um, so where do we head head from here? We have this the scratches. We have the dust. Everything's kind of working. Now we just kind of need to separate it into parts and do what? Like that. Uh, and do some some more adjustments to the to the rendered vehicle. So I will make a copy of it. Um, control C, Control V. I'll just choose one of them. Actually, maybe I can do. No, nope, I can't. Uh, hide it. Create new layer. Active layer. Control V. There we go. And now it's two of them. Of course. This. Change. This one will be... So this default layer will have car joint. And this new layer that I made will have car separated. So now it's time to separate it into parts because I want the glass, I want you know the, this glass to be separate materials, I want these pipes to be separate materials, and of course the the tires and the wheels to be separate material. Um, I'll do that, but I'll do that. We have too many people now. Uh, so it's time to, since since everyone's joining in, it's time to um, have a break <laughs> and force people to leave because they got bored. So I'm going to do exactly that. Um, wait, no. Yeah, there we go. That's that's the right one. Coffee, five minutes. I'm going to leave you with uh, with a render, actually. Might as well, right? Uh, let me just say the output is 1080 and let's just go for let's go for a real-time render let's just find a nice nice angle to look at hmm. I don't know Let's go for something like this, for now. Maybe this, maybe that. Yeah, something like that. Um, so I'm gonna leave you with this for, for a bit. I'm gonna grab some coffee and uh, five minutes and we'll be right on track with our future endeavors.
Why is no one leaving? Why are you still here? Go work. Do your own car. Make your own car. Uh. Webcam, come on. It's a constant fight with the camera. Also constant fight with the music. Okay. We are back. We are back. Uh, are we happy with the result? We are happy with the result, I think. We don't need that. That can be closed. Um, so scratches and whatnot are everywhere. We have some, some dirt build up there. Yeah, we're happy with the result. Okay. Let's... I I get uh, I get very self-conscious when when I see that more than five people are watching me, and then I I, I start making mistakes uh, in modeling. That's why. Um, let's see how how can we? Is there a way of how to separate? <laughs> oh no! Oh no! 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 I think there is a way of how to separate this this kind of geometry, right? Is there? Like there should be There should be there, there's no way that there's there's no option for for separating the geometry. Um, I could do it other way around. Okay, let's do it other way around then. Um, car joint, we hide you. And here we just extract um, not analysis mesh, but uh, control polygon. Extract control polygon. So we get that. Oops. We get that, and now now this is a mesh, right? Which, if we convert to sub D, it's going to be a sub D again. But if, while it's still a mesh, we can get in here and select that loop. Ah, uh, that this is a tricky one. And oh, there we go. And select that loop and use split. No, not split. Uh, extract. Hmm. Maybe there's extract surface. For no, never mind. Extract uh, mesh face. Faces. There we go. So we have now successfully got those two never mind we haven't shit um okay this is gonna be tricky so what if we don't extract the polygon but instead just want to separate okay let's separate the the window first because that's gonna be easier to do so is there a way for me to select this edge around the window and see that everything this this edge splits the form into two parts split no uh, split just a split split edge split face split mesh with curve crease splitting what's that Split and grease surfaces into poly. Okay, that's that's not not what I want. Um, time to Google, I guess. Turns into nerves, huh? Uh, split sub D Rhino. 
Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, that's that's unfortunate, is it not? That's kind of that's kind of crappy. I mean, I know a way of how to solve it, but that seems to be okay. Sure, let me show you. Exploit everything and apply material. One million, <laughs> one million times for each square. No. Um, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Instead, we will, we will extract control polygon from here. We will do that. Um, right. Delete or, or don't delete, uh, select the sub D and delete the sub D. So we have the control polygon extracted. And I'll take this whole car and move it to the side by, let's say, two meters. I need to remember, oh, more than two, four meters. Uh, I need to remember that it's four meters to the side. So that's our like original. And now what I'm gonna do is I'll start deleting edge loops. So if I delete this edge loop here, right, I can split the joint mesh. And now this is a separate entity that I can work with. So that's good, but that means that I need to have an edge loop to delete for every every piece of geometry. Well, for Windows, it's going to be fine because I kind of made it like so that 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 it will just work. Come on, that it. Uh, hello, there we go. Edge loop delete. So that's going to work, right? Split the joint mesh. You get moved away. Yeah, okay. So so that that is going to work. Um so we can get windows out that way. Um Hmm. <laughs> Shovel design in Rhino 5. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, sub D is not that. Uh... Good luck with the shovel. <laughs> uh, sub D is not that friendly yet. But that's fine. That's fine. It will get friendly eventually. Hopefully. Maybe. Um, for now, we just need to kind of stick to it, I guess. Delete, delete, delete that, delete that. So that is split open. And now same thing for here. Delete that. Delete that. Really hope it's gonna be worth it. Good thing that I kinda luckily did all of these inserted extrusions as if I was knowing, were knowing that this is going to be a thing that I need to do. I didn't know that. <laughs> I didn't. Okay, so that. Um, you, are, you, sir, are very broken. I don't even know what the hell you are. It didn't seem so broken on the other side, though. So I have no idea what's up with that. Blade. Also, it's the unwelded shading that's that's kind of catching me off guard here. So that's four. Okay. Pipes, pipes, pipes. That's four. Yep. Yep. Ah, uh, one more, one more, one more. 
Okay, so that's it with the pipes and the glass planes, paints, glass paints, paints. I don't know. Uh, now for the car. Uh, pim -pim. Delete that. Oh my god, this is so hard to to go into. There we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. That works. And now this. Okay, clipping plane. I can't. I just can't. Clipping plane, please. Ah, yes, yes. The almighty clipping plane. Save, save the day. There we go. That and that. Delete. Okay, and the last one is right here. That's gonna be it with, with the splitting. That and that. Okay. Okay, so we have that done, uh, which means that now, technically, we can split the joint mesh and just delete mesh and we have our separated objects here and we can select them uh, to sub D convert them to sub D and just pray that it doesn't make one sub D okay created 14 sub D's that's good hit tab needs to be working Feels like it's working. Can't tell for sure. But it surely feels like it's it's doing a thing. Okay. Guess what we need to do now? You guessed it. Same procedure. Only that here we need to be one loop away. So that's going to be... Well, maybe it's not going to be that tricky for the pipes. Seems to be pretty straightforward. And yeah, that's easy. Or is it? So this is... Uh, I don't know. Maybe someone uh, eventually will comment. Uh, on, on a video saying that, yo, dude, <laughs> you could have just pressed the R button, you know, or, or something like that, and it would just split it. Um, maybe. But as it is right now, I think this is the only way on how to separate geometry in sub D if you modeled everything as a single single piece. Which is not ideal, to say the least, but it does seem to be working. So I'm not gonna... Not gonna say anything bad about it. Just, you know, not ideal. Not ideal. Okay, so we have that. And now for the window... Uh, I need to get in there somehow actually see there we go that that should be enough for me to see I need this edge loop right here I need this that's not the edge loop that I'm looking for that's the edge loop that I'm looking for yeah delete okay um, so that should do the trick with, with this particular window. And for this one, it's going to be this edge loop right here, as well as yeah, the selections are, don't get me started with <laughs> selections, like overall selection issues in Rhino. I tend to compare Rhino to Blender quite a bit, 
but honestly like blender is free <laughs> so it 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 should be shittier, right? In terms of selecting things and then so on, but it's it's kind of not. Rhino is worse, at least for me. Maybe that's that's my workflow. Maybe yeah, that that could be it. That could be just just my workflow that's at fault. Um, but it seems like it feels like. Um, wait, where did I trim it off there? One bevel, one polygon, one bevel, one po oh no, never mind. Single polygon from the inset. Okay. Um, I need to see that inset. There's the inset. There's single polygons. So I need to. Uh, you need to do what? Here it's this edge loop. That's easy. Oh, and don't don't select the clipping plane. So here it's this edge loop. That is that is not going to be tricky. But here, here though. It goes right until the the wheel, right? So I need If it goes right until the wheel here, I need this to be deleted. Yeah. I think. Wait. <laughs> crap. Crap, 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 crap. Um, extension needs to be part of the car and now it is. And if I split the joint mesh and select this, delete it, then there is the extension, and then the extension goes all the way through here, which is incorrect. Shit. Okay, messed up. Shit. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, so it's actually um, this set of polygons and actually this set of polygons, right? Okay. And same thing here before I forget this set and this set. Okay. Whew. Um, last one. Last one. Um, need to check. So these extend until. Okay, that's good. That's gonna be an easy selection. You and you delete. I think we're ready. Boys and girls, I think we are ready. Split the joint mesh, just take the car model, move it back uh, by 4000, like that, uh, to sub D, convert it to sub D. Yeah, still a mesh there, never mind. Cell mesh, delete, hit tab, investigate, investigate, enhance, enhance. That's good, that's good. All of that connects kind of nicely. Chill stream, that's good. That That's what I want. Just to chill after a hard day's work. Don't look at the intersections. No, 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 don't, don't, don't look at them. Don't look at them. They're fine. They're fine. Everything is fine. Actually, why are there intersections there? I purposely designed it without any intersections. Did it mess up my... Actually, whatever. Um, so that looks okay. The connections are fine. Okay, we can, we can continue. We can continue. Um, so now we have multiple elements. Uh, which means we can add multiple geometries. Car master goes on here. And generic, which is just going to be for now a beautiful red color, is going to be the glass. Apply. And the pipes are going to be.
just another generic material and they're gonna be beautiful blue and the tires are gonna be black generic 3 color well not black but kind of dark gray for now all right let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see winner gets t cool works okay that's good that's good mm. What do we start working on? Where do we start working on this? Um, I'm thinking... I'm thinking glass, because that's the largest area, right? So let's, let's work on glass. Um, I will do a blend for it as well. So that's going to be a blend material. Um, blend material, and I'm going to call it... Glass master right and it's going to have a base which is already here uh, our red material so that's just going to be glass base um and it's basically going to be okay let, let's think about it. for now let's just do do it real real quick so color is going to be black ish kind of reflection is going to be full and reflection glossiness is going to be pretty close to one and i think that's that's going to do the trick so car master base material car or, or glass master base material glass base and then i'm gonna add dust because it it it, it will have dust on top so another coat on it is going to be car dust like that and the blending I'll just I'll just borrow it <laughs> for from my car master um, let's get that car dust in there copy paste as copy render let's take a look okay Okay, I dig it. I dig it. Um, right now, we don't need the environment maybe anymore. Maybe we do. It's a little bit too glossy, right? It's too glossy. Uh, let's let's take a closer closer look at it. Yeah, the gloss is way too much. Also, if I hide the dust, will it? How, how will it look like if I hide the dust? And why is it still rendering? Stop. Stop the render. I know. Uh, that's because we're using such a high resolution for test rendering. That's why. There we go. That's faster. So the dust is not influencing it in any way. Let me hide the background. So that's how it looks like without the background. Maybe. I think we can do better. I think we can do better with, with this material. So let's see, let's see it with the dust on top. Or not, I guess. Are you gonna... Do I just need to hide the car for now? <laughs> and render it without the car that's gonna be faster right so we can't really see the dust what's up with that that's strange 
Oh, that's because... Oh my god, I'm so stupid. I didn't apply car... <laughs> I didn't apply glass master to the glass elements. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apply. Okay, now it works. Uh, now the dust works, and now we will actually be able to see the speckles and uh, no they don't they don't work or will do they yes they do okay uh, i mean it's not that bad not that great but not that bad as well it's super shiny though i don't want it to be that shiny so glass paint no uh gl glass base needs a lesser reflection color and I think it needs to reflect a little bit tor towards the bluish tint, right? Something closer to that. And reflection glossiness needs to be ramped up to 0. Point, or ramped down to 0. 0.9. Something like this. Well, 0 0.95 was fine, actually. Just this needs to be toned down even further. Okay. For now, I'm going to keep it the way it is. We are going to revisit it in, uh, in a little while, but for now, this is fine. Actually, maybe the buildup can be adjusted. So for Glass Master, I'm going to actually go into the mixed mix map, and for the value, I'm going to e make it even less. It's tricky. It's super tricky with this. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty sharp fall off there. Uh, can't can't do anything about it. Okay, fine. We will we will leave it at that for now. Let's look at the car with the glass or with the dust. That's how it looks. Why is that still super shiny? Oh, I know. I have an idea. Glass base has a reflection color, right? But instead, we can just use that blend copy for the reflection color. Paste as copy. And mess around with it. And it should work. It should work. It has to work. Just stops reflecting altogether. Uh, let's re-render and then see if that's that's uh, that's the culprit. Yeah, that was the culprit. Okay, so that enhance. 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 Why? 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 That's that's not how it's supposed to be. That reflection here shouldn't be here. Is it that? Is it that? Yes, it's that, okay. Okay, so now... Now we're getting somewhere. Okay, 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 now, now it's working, now it's working. The reflection is working now. Whew, okay. But it needs to be inverted. Shit. Um, so, it's other way around.
Oh my god. Uh, why is it so... It's so freaking intense. Can we just do something like this? I don't even see what, what the hell... I don't have an env environment map. That's uh, that, that, that's that's a non-issue. Yeah, I don't have an environment map. Okay, fine. For now, I'm gonna keep it. Fine. There's a blob there. Sure, whatever. Uh, the only thing that lights up my scene is uh, this this array of, of lights. Anyway, um, for now glass is okay. Uh, tires are just gonna be okay. Tires are gonna be fast, so I'm just gonna make the tires. Um, uh, wh wh where is it? Car, car master, car paint, generic. Uh, this, 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 these were tires. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm not even going to bother with the dust, but I am going to give them, actually they are pretty dark. Well, I can give them dirt. That's, that's true. Okay, let me give them dirt, blend texture, copy, onto the tires, paste as copy, like that, and I will just say, um, include that color, one texture, and that texture is like so, that's fine. So we don't really need it, clear clear that, and instead let's just say occluded color is black, unoccluded color is white, or, or, or dark gray. That's 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 about it. That's that's about it in terms of, of, of tires. Don't need to do much more. I'll add the bump map to them later. Um and pipes, right? Pipes. So these are the pipes. Um, what do we do with the pipes? Actually, maybe for the pipes we can already reuse the stuff that we have here. Maybe that's gonna work. Because we have some good stuff here. Yeah, let's try that. Uh, so I will delete the pipes material and instead I will create a new blend. Or rather I will duplicate car master mate uh, blend material. Duplicate it. Um, right. And call it car or pipe master. Like that. And let's see, dust is fine, dirt is fine, paint, we don't need paint. And then we just kind of slap it on top here, and I think it's going to do the trick. Should do the trick at least. Hit render, see what's, what's cooking. Okay, so now for the dust, it needs a different color. It needs to be closer to gray. Something like that. Um, for the dirt, 
needs to be a little bit lighter. Then let us uh, let's create a ground plane, infinite plane, like that. Move it up. Sure, and can I just do glass base on it? I really don't want to create a new material. I'll just add glass base on it for now. So we have that. Or do we do it in a light environment? That might also be cool. Let's try. I just wanna wanna see if it's it's if it's gonna be cool or not. Um, what's the best way? Maybe a box, right? Something like that. Fillet corners or uh, fillet edges. Radius. Uh, Three meters. Okay, so we have this donut shape here. Um, and does the donut shape have any kind of a Well, we need to get rid of the lights then, right? And we need to kind of mess around with the donut shape. So first of all, let's actually make it proper, proper sized and let's get, up, get rid of the lights. Uh, solid points on. I'm thinking something like this, right? Thinking something like this will do the trick. Come on, there we go. Um, yep. So that's our view. Let's for now do something like this. Mm -hmm. And then fillet edge. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, uh, 3000, I guess is too much. Uh, let's do 1.5 meters. Bam, 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 bam. Like that. Okay. <clears throat> let's do some lights. I don't like HDR lights. I like to control my own lighting situation. I think it's nicer with, 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 when you do your own lighting. Um, so let's say we will have one, two, let, let's say three lights here and three more here. Those are just going to be, or maybe, maybe nine in total. What, what? Hello? Why are you not scaling up properly? Okay, let's scale this down. Maybe something closer to this. One, two, three. Two, three. Something like that. Um, the height of them is fine. Okay, so we have the top down lights and now I will just put up some um, 
some stronger light sources just somewhere on, on, on the scene for, for it to light the, the car. So let me hide the box for a bit. Um, and this is a very big light source, so we don't need it that big. Well, something like that. Actually, speaking of light, there we go, warmer, warmer lights. Um, something like that might, might, might do the trick. Um, I'll stop with the gumball, or rather, I'll stop with the ortho snapping. Something like that. I think it's fine. So, we will have... Technically, for, for like every, every view, you want... You want a separate light condition? I will not be doing that. Um, polar array. I'll just do this around uh, x axis, uh, around three lights, 360. Okay, so we have those lights now. And I'll just kind of move them in place, like so. That is actually good enough. I know they're, they're not looking at the car. That's fine. I can adjust them so that they do. And this one is a little bit... Should be off-center. Like that. That's now fine. Okay, let's just see. Uh, let's see how, how these work. So, uh, what kind of lights did it generate? Okay, so we have two. So. This, I assume, is going to be the top ones, and these are going to be the, the focus lights. So, I will... I'll actually get... Let's see this light right now. Uh, let's see this light right here. I'll get this light. And I'll move it down and rotate it in a weird position, like so. And maybe it can be horizontal, actually. Kind of horizontal. Like that. Now it's looking up. Come on. Look back. Yeah, there we go. So this light right here, I want to separate it from the rest. Um, light. What the hell? Uh, light uh am i blind or, or or is this the incorrect yo <laughs> what's up with that uh i want to separate this light now it's changed the setting okay sure make unique so i want to make this light unique and this is going to be our um focal or whatever rim light whatever you want to call it um so these are the top ones the top ones will be uh perhaps a little bit towards the colder side or maybe white that that's fine and our other ones will be on the warmer side so we're washing it with with a little bit warmer color i think that's gonna have a nice nice little effect here and then for our building thing, I will just create a generic material. It's just going to be kind of white. White-ish. Let's see. Let's see how the, how the car reacts to it. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's something that we can work with. Okay. Uh, first thing is we hide the lights. Invisible. 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 That's the first thing. Second thing is... 
We definitely don't... This is too much. Too, there, there's too much light now. Um, so instead of messing around with the lights, and by the way, I've, I forgot, the ceiling lights need to be less. Um, like that. That needs to be white. And that needs to be like 50. Or even less. If focal is 10, then other two will be 50, uh, 100, then other two will be 50, and this one will be 25. Something like this. That's good. We can move this uh, these lights away a bit. So let me jump to wireframe and these are too close. So these can be moved away. Holy crap, it's okay. Uh, let me redo these because it's a mess. Um, rectangle. Bam, like that. Scale it down a bit. Just so that it's like so. Bam. Maybe these need to be scaled down as well. And I need more of them. We'll, th we'll think about it. So we have this bad boy here. Um, let's make it vertical and let's force it to look at the car. Something like this. This is quite far away. Maybe it can be closer, but uh, a little bit more narrow. Something like that. A little bit rotated. Sub D face edge vertex toggle. Sub D face. What did it do? <laughs> what did it do? What did I do now? Explain. Explain what it does. While you're explaining, I will array polar. A for axis, or actually array polar with the regular Z axis. Let's do five. I think five is, is a good number. Like that. These get moved back a bit. Like that. And I think we have a we have a working working source. Um yeah, for now I'll keep it as, as 100 and white, that's fine. Um I do want to mess around with the with the top lights though, this should be more narrow. Like that. But there should be more of them. Like that. Like that. Yeah, I'll just borrow from here. Like that. Like that. And actually, the top ones, I don't mind. They can be... Like, uh, I, I can look at them. That's okay. That's fine. Filtering for easier selection. Well, there is this... Uh, where is it? There is this, right? Uh, selection filter edges, selection filter faces, selection filter vertices, like these three. And when once I click on this, I can only select vertices now, right? I can't select anything else. There is this tool, but accessing it, like uh, jumping between like these selection tools is hell. It's bad. It's I I either need to 
Um, to put a tick mark here. Yeah, I know, but I'm I, I'm not gonna be doing any uh, any animation, so that's fine. So I can I can put tick marks here, and I can kind of say what I what I'm working on and what I want to uh, what I want to select. But why can't I just press one on my num numpad or anywhere? I press one for vertices, two for edges, three for faces, right? And when I want to work with vertices, I just hit one and then click on the vertices. Then I hit two, I click on the edges. If I click zero, then I can select everything. You know, as long as no commands are running. I don't know. Seems like a weird, weird thing not to implement. Either way. Um, that, those are invisible though. Have I been rendering the whole time? <laughs> Yikes. Okay, that's good. So that's starting to, starting to come alive little by little. Um, the... Okay, we are back.